So this will be brief, but essentially it's important to realize that astronomy is a science. And so like any science, it follows a scientific method. But it's also different than other sciences because in, in lab sciences, such as chemistry, biology, or physics, we can actually go into the lab and do experiments. But obviously we can't do experiments on the stars or the galaxies. They're just out there doing their thing. All we can do is observe them. And so the way that the scientific method works in astronomy is very much centered around observations. And so that's why I had you looking at galaxies, at images of galaxies, because those are the raw observations that we're going to use in this class to understand um, how stars are organized into galaxies, the role of dark matter in the universe, um, how galaxies are structured on larger scales, and what all of this entails and means for some of the biggest questions that we can ask, like where did the universe come from? How long has it been here? Has it always been the same or has it changed over time? How will it change in the future? How will it end? So those are some of the biggest questions that, that I think can be asked. I mean, I'm a little bit biased because I'm a physicist with an interest in astronomy. So I like those questions. Um, and those are the questions that we'll answer. So all of these observations that we make um, using our telescopes or, or using our naked eye observations, those provoke questions. When I look at an image um, of the Andromeda galaxy, for example, I say, um, there's you know, things I notice. It looks like it's bluer around the edges. It looks like it's yellow in the middle. It looks like maybe there's another little galaxy next to it. What's going on there? Is that little galaxy gonna crash into Andromeda? Um, how do galaxies move through space? Are we gonna crash into another galaxy? Um, so looking at observations provokes those questions. And then it's the job of an astronomer to come up with hypotheses that make testable predictions. So any hypothesis in science has to make a testable prediction. If it doesn't, it's not a scientific hypothesis. So what is a testable prediction? It's something that we can actually gather um, evidence for by you know, collecting many different observations, fitting them together, and then saying, okay, is this consistent with our hypothesis or not? So that's um, testable predictions and hypotheses. An example looking at the Andromeda galaxy could be, yes, I predict that this galaxy is moving toward Andromeda. So maybe there's something I can do to measure the, um, the speed and direction of motion of that little galaxy to find out if my hypothesis that it will collide is true or not. Um, okay. And then finally, we have to test predictions through experiments or observations. And since in astronomy, we can't really do experiments, it falls to us to do a lot of observations. And so this is the push behind why um, we are always looking to build bigger and better telescopes and put them in space, uh, which is you know extraordinarily expensive and difficult to do, is because we have so many of these burning questions that demand new observations in order to test. So actually, that's a really good point. That's basically the only kind of experiment we can run in astronomy is computer simulations and models. So I would put that under generally the experiment phase where you ask a, a question, you have some testable hypothesis, and then you can actually run simulations to uh, deliver some sort of answer. That's a really good point. And they're actually used often in tandem with observations. So we'll do um, simulations using computers and see if they match up with our observations or if there's a mismatch, why? Yeah, really good point, thanks. All right, it might be a little bit high level here for now, um, but you'll see how uh, this all plays out as we go through the class because I want you to be involved in practicing this type of method. We will use observations in this class, ask questions of them and actually do lab activities to basically see if our predictions match our observations or not. So that's pretty much what we're going to be doing during a lot of our in-class activities. All right, so I wanna give you a little bit of practice doing that right now. So you gathered a bunch of observations of galaxies at the uh, earlier in class, and now I have put them together into a gallery. So let me share with you this gallery. All right, so what you're going to do in the second part of this activity is basically look through all of the images of galaxies that you've collected um, as a group and see what you find in common and different between all the images. So this would be the job of 
an early galaxy astronomer would be to look for patterns in the different types of galaxies we see in the sky and see if they um, you know, share any particular characteristics or not. 